Hi, my name is Samantha Mirabal. I was going to do a quick follow-up on this video I previously created on how to do a knockdown stitch. In that video, I um, show you how to do it, but I use some of the features that are only available on Pro Plus. So I was going to quick show you how you could do the same thing using just Design Shop Standard. So here, uh, this is in the previous tutorial of how I got to this far, uh, where I create the fill. Um, I just rearranged it. From here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a um, object offset outline, and I'm going to do 30, let's say. Oops, helps if I hit OK. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is clean up my ends. I don't quite like how this looks, so now I'm just, you know, making it look a little bit cleaner, essentially. So I'm going to make it look a little more rounded. And then I'll go clean up the other side. And here, that's, I already rounded it okay, so I'm going to add a point here and get rid of this one because we don't need a sharp point like that. And I think I like that better. Okay, so now I have an offset. So from here, I just need to be able to change this so it's a knockdown instead of a full fill. So to do that, I'd click on the fill. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to double click on it. From here, I'm going to change the density to something big. Um, I'm going to say 25. This Trapunto, which is how I used in the last video, you're not going to have. Um, that's only in the, pro, the higher levels of Design Shop. So I'm going to leave the density at 25. Now I'm going to come to my underlay and change it to a fill underlay. And I'm going to set the border margin as zero. That way, my fill comes all the way to the edge. And I'm going to set the density of this to be the same number as to whatever I typed here. So if you put 15 here, then you want 15 here. You put 25, you want 25. So it's always the same. So what you'll see is it leaves all these lines and it's not a complete edge. When you use your punto, it'll clean up those points. And it, you can also use a trace border feature, which will um, clean up this edge. We don't have that in the standard design shop. So what you can do is the points you're not going to really see anyway, because hopefully this is tone on tone. So if you're sewing like on a um, white stocking or a pink blanket, let's say, you would use a white a white thread for this knockdown or a pink or whatever, it is, the color of the fabric that you're going to sew on. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to clip click on this complex fill. I'm going to hold the shift key down. While my shift key is held down, I'm going to click on the select walk input method. And what that did for me is now I have a fill and I have a walk normal. And you'll see now my edges are all at least clean. All right. So now I can go and update my trims, which is this button here. And you'll notice I have a trim between these. That's not ideal. I'd want to get rid of that. So to get rid of a trim, what you do is you go after. And in order for you to have no trim, um, you're going to have to have your starts and stops all on top of each other. So I'm going to move my fill start to, let's say, here. And I'm going to use move my fill end to, let's say, there. Yeah, let's put it over here. All right, so the fill stitch is going to start here, and it's going to come down. It'll end over here. So now I'm going to go to my walk. So now all I have to do is move my walk stitch starting near that propeller. So I'm actually going to use my walk to start and stop right near that propeller. And I'll update my auto trims, and you'll notice it went away. So what that means is this is going to continuously sew now. So if I go to play, you'll see it's going to draw out the shape, fast forwarding through. All right, now some, let me pause this if I can. So notice on that fill, through here we have some walk, running stitches and other stuff. You're not going to notice it much, but if you want to get rid of that, what you would do is just play with your starts and stops. That's what's driving that. So you notice I can affect it differently just by moving these, the start around. Okay, and the other thing is just with how the densities are lining up, that's why I'm getting two lines on top of each other right here. So in that case, what I might actually need to do is change my stitch direction. Okay, so you can play with this, and you see you get completely different looks, and you can just adjust it until you're happy with what you're seeing. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that for now. So I've got a fill. It's a crosshatch now. I've got my border, which is going to be a running stitch. 
If you want it to be really defined, you can do a retrace. I, you know, for what this is doing, you don't need to do that. Okay, and again, our start and stop got goofed up when I started monkeying with it, so I'm going to go put it back on top over here. Okay, so now it's continuously sewn, and then we'll do our letters. And there's a knockdown for you without using the Trapunto and Trace Border. All right, I hope this was helpful. Let's see.